Well, what's going on, everybody? I'm so glad that you're able to join me in the studio for another awesome project. Now, today's going to be a thrift store build, but not just a thrift store build. It is spooky season over here in Byerly Studios, and we're going to make an awesome glow-in-the-dark ghost. Now, a year ago, I had purchased this little itty-bitty ghost candle holder from Walmart. It had been marked down from its original price to $5, and then $5 to a dollar, and then it found me. It's a permanent home, and we're going to turn this little awesome thrift store build or clearance item into something absolutely awesome. So come join me in the studio, guys, and we'll make some awesome arts and crafts. Let's go! What's up? And welcome back into Byerly Studios, everybody. I'm so excited to bring you this little fun video. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and it's been on my to-do list for, for quite a long time. So I, last year, around Halloween, I had purchased this little itty-bitty ghost candle holder uh, from Walmart. It was on sale for $5 on the clearance aisle, and then they had even marked it down to a dollar. So I purchased this thing for a dollar and some tax, and... It's, it's pretty cool. So it's been sitting around for a while. It's finally time to turn this thing into something amazing and just fun. And it's just a relaxing project. This isn't something that I did for a customer. It's just something for me in the studio just to enjoy just crafting, right? It's good just to just to get in the studio and, and not have to worry about making something to sell. It's just something fun to make. So we're going to make this an ooey gooey ectoplasmic ghost. It's going to have some twists and turns along the way, but it's just supposed to be a fun build. So right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and sand that down. Uh, it didn't matter what grit sandpaper. I'm just scuffing it up a little bit so that I can uh, put a base layer of paint on it. I do know that I want the eyes to glow, and I wanted to use the, the stained glass resin effect where I uh, put the resin in there, let the UV resin cure, and then I can put some mica powders over it. I did this very first color in a like a like a uh, a bright blue, and I ended up uh, making the mica powders just way too too dark. So the light didn't cascade through it as I wanted it to. If I had used a brighter light in it, then it would have worked a little bit better, maybe a battery powered light. But I'm just gonna use like a little a little tea light in this thing, a little battery powered tea light. It doesn't put off a whole lot of light, and it kind of has a flicker effect to it. So we're just going to kind of keep this laid back and, and light and airy. And although I did do this and I did include it just so you can kind of see what the color looked like when I got it done. I pulled that out there. And then here is the overall final effect. After I've removed that plastic saran wrap, which was keeping all the resin in place so I could remove that, I do cure that for a little bit longer. And as you can see there, it just kind of slides right into place. I originally did this so that maybe I could use this and uh, as like a sketch to where I can keep it in place just by pressure and then I could actually make different colors so that if I got tired of seeing the same old glowing eyes and mouth on my shelf then I can just switch it out for a different color. I come back and redo that later so we'll revisit that towards the end of the build. Now this is me and my daughter. I do include my daughter in a lot of the projects that I do and this is her hand painting it black and that's why I scuffed it up because I'm just going to use basic acrylic paints. Uh, this is a Mars black and we're going to give it a few coats just to kind of give it a very dark color. I don't want a bright white light ghost. I want a dark, dingy, gooey, nasty ghost. We're going to kind of go the opposite way with it. So you'll really start to see the overall uh, shape of the item really transform as I go through later stages in the build. But like I said, it's just supposed to be fun, laid back, and just something that I can just enjoy doing over a few weeks period uh, in the crafting studio. So here I'm going to apply the first layer of drip. Now I'm going to kind of number these drips as I go through. Uh, it doesn't matter what type of drip they are, they're all going to be numbered. So you can kind of get a ballpark of how many times I had to wait for something to dry before I could do the next stage. Now this is a Mod Podge layer uh, of just glue. I applied a little bit of water to this so it's a little bit more runny. And the goal is just that it's going to drip down the exterior of the ghost just in a natural way. Uh, I'm controlling it a little bit with the popsicle stick there, but I just want it to just do what it does. And what I plan to do is I'm going to mix up a neon glow glitter. Uh, I believe that it was from Glitter Chimp, and then I also have a uh, off-brand glow in the dark uh, mica powder. And I mix those together to give it extra powder. I find that sometimes the mica powder glow in the dark pig, uh, powders glow more than anything. So I do like to incorporate those into my paint mixtures uh, and my glitter mixtures uh, at, at, when I apply those to items. I wasn't going to use a whole bunch of glitter here or poison a bunch of glitter in, in with the glow in the dark mica powders. 
I don't want everything to glow when I use that glitter. So I did have to reuse the uh, excess glitter that had run off of the item multiple times. Uh, extra stages, extra moving it around, uh, but I'm not going to waste a bunch of glitter just doing one layer. Layer number two is going to be a folk art glow in the dark white, and I do add a few drops of uh, glow in the dark yellow to that as well, just to bring up the tone so it's not pure white, uh, and it just makes it look a little bit more um, off white and dingy. Same thing, I'm going to apply that to the top and let it run down. I'm going to control this a little bit more, and as I start to get towards the other layers and they start to build, 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 I will control it more and more. Uh, but right now, I know that a lot of this is going to just literally just drain off the bottom of the little ghost here, and it's just going to just be wasted. And that's okay. I don't want it to be super thick. I know it's going to drain off, and I'm willing to waste a little bit of uh, two-part epoxy and acrylic paints just to get the desired effect. As long as the item turns out great, then I'm cool with it. I'm going to use the little needle tool there, and I'm going to make sure I keep those eyes opened up. Uh, this is an ongoing process because they want to close up with that epoxy running over them. So you just got to make sure that you pull that epoxy away and then just wipe the excess off onto a paper towel. Alright, so this is layer number three here. Now this is a neon, neon glow-in-the-dark uh, folk art paint. I've mixed this with uh, some more two-part epoxy, and when you mix the acrylics with two-part epoxy, it tends to cure it a lot faster. The more paint you add, the faster it happens. Uh, I don't know why that is. It's some kind of chemical reaction where it just causes the, the two parts to cure a lot faster. And if you if you set it off to the side and you forget about it, it can quickly just cure up on you. Uh, and that kind of happened here. You can see why I have a big old glob of it on my popsicle stick. It's no big deal. I, I made a lot of it so that I had excess. Um, but I just went ahead and just put what I had on there. This is what it looks like as of right now with the glow uh, on, under a UV light. Now it will absorb more UV light as I finish out other stages. This is it with the, the glow in the dark light off. Layer number four. Now this is back to the original uh, uh, drip that I had put on it. This is a uh, folk art glow in the dark white and a few drops of yellow. So now this is very, very runny. As you can see here, it's running off very fast. Now this is six times speed, of course. So I am being very controlled of where I lay that glow in the dark paint with the popsicle stick. And you can see just how much of it is literally just dripping right off. I probably did not let this set up long enough. And I should have, but it's okay. It's no big deal. It's just I'm trying to get some of the, the black under paint covered up a little bit more. Layer number five, it was at the same uh, day, so this is just the same portion, just a different color. And now this is just a glow in the dark folk art paint, not neon, just glow, which is a more of a pale green. There it is under UV light, kind of seeing where it, where it needs to be added some more. Now this is number layer number six, but it's the same day. I just let it set up a little bit more so that I can kind of see where it is. It is technically a separate session, so I let it set for about 10, I think 15 minutes, uh, and then I came back and it just added a little bit more, but it was a separate overall drip from the original. So, so going between colors, I still count that as another layer of drip. You can see it's still, it's still pretty, pretty runny. I did not add a lot of paint to that, so it didn't set up very fast. Uh, and then I'm just going to gently sprinkle on a little bit of the Mica Glow Glitter Powder the mixture that I had previously used. This isn't a whole lot. This is just a little bit just to give it a little bit extra glow uh, when I put it under a UV light. There it is under UV light. Now this is not in a dark room, but it is absorbing quite well. Very cool. So up to this point, I'm very happy with how it's turned out so far. Making sure that those eyes are clean again. I even go around the mouth a little bit. I think overall it's looking pretty good. It's kind of dripping off the back a little bit. Uh, I want to make sure that that black isn't visible from the from behind either, even though the items can be facing forward on the shelf. Here's some kind of like a uh, glamour shots of the ghost itself the ghost portion almost done and now we're going about to up the uh, the ante a little bit and increase the overall funness of the build i want to incorporate some uh, sculpy clay into this and just create some tentacles and claws and things like that
All right, everybody. So I want to put myself in the middle of this video here. I'm trying out a different way of uh, video and content. I'll probably use this once in a while when I'm trying just to uh, decrease the overall duration of the video while also not uh, leaving out content, right? So this is two parts here. On the right hand side over here, I'm working on building the little base for the tentacles and the little claws and things like that. I'm gonna kind of reduce that base size in a moment. I have built out a foam block. It was just way too big, so I do shrink that down in a moment. And then I start to introduce uh, armature wires and, and build out the tentacles from there. On the left hand side over here, uh, you'll see that I am uh, base coating the finished already baked base with Mars Black. So of course that didn't take as long, but they're sped up and, and, and uh, decreased speed uh, so that they kind of run at the same time and they're running beside each other, which is just kind of cool. So in the middle, you see me talking. Very cool, right? Uh, so on the left, uh, the right-hand side over here, you can see I'm in the bottom right-hand corner. That was also done on TikTok Live, which is pretty cool. So I had some uh, my uh, friends and followers in there uh, able to see me do some sculpt work on this little fun build. Uh, before it got ooky and icky with all of the uh, the two-part epoxy drips and things like that. You can see I'm also cutting the armature wires. Just kind of ballparking how I want those to be. Now, this could probably be built without armatures, but I decided just to just to go ahead and add those in case it were to like fall off the shelf or something later. Uh, it just reduces the likelihood that it could break. Now, I, I could have invested hours and hours into sculpting these little arms but they were gonna be covered in ectoplasmic uh, drip, just like the main ghost is. And I was thinking to myself, well, I could just leave them kind of bare bones and just give them just the overall shape. And that's really what I do. If I ever wanna make it again in super extreme detail, I would probably go ahead and, I'd probably go ahead and sculpt the ghost and all. So it's maybe not something I might do later, but as of right now, I'm kind of happy with the finished effect of it. So some of them were kind of twisted and bent at the top. I ended up cutting some of those off. Um, and even after I bake them, some of the, the, the little arms where they're making contact with the main base break. And I had to come in with some repair work later during the painting process, uh, puffy paint and some extra things like that to uh, increase the strength. But overall, it's pretty good. Uh, and you can see on the left-hand side over here, I'm still painting that in a Mars black and I'm painting it off screen. <laughs> it's okay so the overall effect is still there right i'm just getting that thing completely blacked out so that it has the same uh base color as the ghost itself i want it to look like these little arms and things are kind of coming out from underneath the ghost skirt that was already there it, i kind of am able to achieve that in the in the way that i wanted to but i still think that uh that, that overall it's not exactly how I wanted to. I want the ectoplasmic drip to continue down on to the joints of the legs to add strength. And I think I'm able to pull that off. You'll see in a little while. You can still see where they're going under if you look closely enough, but the ectoplasm is everywhere. So now on the left, uh, the, the right hand side over here, I am, um, I am now going to go ahead and build out the arms out and away from the base. And I kind of blend those in as I go. On the left hand side over here i am still base coating that it's a long process because those arms are coming up at different angles right uh you have to kind of rotate it uh, on my little turner here to get the angles right so i don't miss any spots uh, i do come in later on and also and i do base coat the bottom which is less important uh, because I, I i think that i'll probably really put a uh, a little bit of carpet on the bottom of it because I don't want that uh, two-part resin or any of the UV resins, if they happen to be a little bit tacky, not tacky, but just, it's, I don't want them to adhere to the, 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 the paint of the desk, right? And I don't want them to pull that up at all. So I'll probably apply some carpet to the bottom of the overall diorama so that that is uh, sitting softly on wherever it is. Uh, because the ectoplasm kind of is going to roll over the edge, roll over the edge of the shelf a little bit. So it kind of hugs the edge. And of course, if it hugs the edge, that means it's sitting on the edge in a way. And if it gets caught or pulled, I don't want it to, I don't want it to be stuck to the debt of the shelf and pull the white paint off or something like that. So as you can see, I'm just still building that out on the right hand side here. 
you, you can see that good looking guy in that bottom corner, man. He's, he's a, he's a good looking man. I'm removing any of the excess between the arms that I can get away with so that it looks like they're more retracted inside the bottom of that skirt. And it also gives, a, when I do add a few more layers of drip, it drips off of the edge of that skirt and then in between those legs, and it just adds some different uh, variations in the drip. I will say painting this uh, this item over here was very, very difficult with the Mark Black just because of how awkward it was to keep on uh, the parchment paper on that item. So it was kind of all over the place. I think I even dropped it like twice on my desk. It was just very awkward to paint, very awkward. Still building out those uh, tentacles, kind of making sure that they're not in the way of the ghost base. And I kind of dry fit that a few times in, in on the base. When I get the Mars black done uh, with the painting portion, I do come in with some uh, glow in the dark paints and I kind of just do a, a, wet, a wet wash over it. I really didn't need to do that. I should have just hang tight with what I had and just relied on the glitters, the mica powders, and the glow in the dark paints uh, with the two part po epoxies uh, to do the work for me. I didn't really need to do a lot of the leg work on that painting portion except for just the base. Still building out those arms and I'm just trying to make sure that they're somewhat uniform. I don't want any of the armature wire to be showing and I want to try to have the armature wire in the middle of that clay to add strength. Even then when I baked them they kind of broke and they kind of applied pressure where I didn't need them to. Uh, it, it worked out. Maybe I should have used a little bit of the thicker, thicker armature wire. That would have probably helped a lot more. Or if I really wanted to go to the next extreme, I would have like twisted the armature wire around the base and then and then built the base on the armature wire itself so that they have pressure from the center and they're not just stuck in the sides. So there I am dry fitting the ghost into place. And it's overall starting to really give me the shape that I want. I want those tentacles to kind of be out there a little bit away from the body. And, um, and then I decided to add some claws as well. So same process, I'm just gonna continue working those arms, kind of blend it a little bit as I, as I go. I don't want any kind of like harsh blends to where it, it would shine through the epoxy. And then you just, if you were looking up close at it, you're like, well, oh my goodness, there's a big old crack right there. Those have to be blended at least a lot, enough to where the epoxy can hide things like that and add some strength to anything that's broken. And uh, there were there were quite a few places that were broken and had to be mended, so I'm okay with that. So right here you can see I'm actually going to go ahead and, uh, and, and sculpt little claws. I was hoping that the claws would kind of be coming down and away from the body, like down the, down the front of the shelf where the waterfall effect would come in. So like if this were the, sh the shelf right here and then the, the waterfall ooze would come over the edge and then his claws would be coming down like right here. I kind of candy quartered them kind of like that for it, like in a way. And then when they were baking, they kind of sagged a little bit. Eh, it is what it is. As long as they were just kind of like just a little bit below the grade of the front of that shelf, just to add a little bit more technical difficulty to it. And instead of it just all being like up here, you know, I was okay with that. So it kind of gave me the desired effect that I wanted. I think I was pretty happy with the overall, overall finish of it. So removing some of the meat from that front part as well, so that way it looks like it's like, you know, concaved in, like, you know, in, in set a little bit, you know, that's, that's what I'm look, look, looking for. Continuing that base layer of Mars Black, you can kind of see how long that, that one layer of Mars Black took. I didn't want to use spray paint, I just didn't feel like it. I wanted to have it hand brushed on just so I could uh, control the thickness of it. I, I applied that, that paint pretty liberally. Like I wasn't, I wasn't afraid to just cake it on and let it spread as I needed it to, but it's, it's pretty thick. It took a day or so to really cure and, um, and set up. Still just removing meat from the side of that right there. Um, the, the back of the, the, uh, the diorama piece isn't really visible from the front unless you pick it up, turn around and you can physically look at it. 
Um, and I like that the back of the candle uh, candle holder is open so that I have the option to come in later and put a, a little a real electrical light bulb in with the power plug so that way I get more, uh, more lumens inside his mouth and eyes to make them glow even more. Uh, but, but for now, the little, little teacup light gives the, the overall effect that I want. I, I probably will uh, opt in for a brighter light later. Here it is under a, a UV light uh, now during the day. So this is all during the day right here. Uh, so it's not glowing truly as brightly as it could. And then once it's charged with the UV light, it does hold its, 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 uh, its glow pretty well. So um, I've had it technically completed for a day or so. Uh, and I'll be walking through the house in the middle of the night, you know, and it's, it draws the eye to the side. So uh, it does the effect that I want it to. It draws the eye, it pulls in that, those lumens so that it can, uh, it can hold its glow for quite a while. All right, back to your normal uh, daily broadcasting here. We're on layer number seven. Now this is going to be a glitter and mica two-part epoxy blend. Uh, just going over the initial Mars black of the tentacles and the claws. And it's just, just going to give it an overall just kind of a glittery glow base, similar to what the, the, the main ghost had previously. So I'm not using Mod Podge on this version. Instead, I'm using two-part uh, epoxy so that it has more of a, uh, of a transparent look to it. Kind of wiping off any excess here. I'm just trying to use as much of, of the two-part epoxy as I can. That way I don't waste any of this uh, this drip here. I want to make sure as much of that stays up there as possible. It's going to be very drippy in later stages. Um, and that's why I'm going to start using the, the silicone mat here and a lot more parchment paper. It's such a messy process and I'm looking for so many drips on it that I, I just don't want to have that clean up after. So silicone mats really definitely help. Here I am using just UV resin and I'm laying out thin strips and then I'm going to partially cure these so that way I can create uh, controlled string drips between the main ghost body and the tentacle arms. Now this is a little bit of a process so uh, this is also supposed to be very enjoyable right so you're really adding some character to it you're adding something that's uh, more intricate as far as building I could use uh, some also some fishing line and UV resin to get the same effect if I wanted thinner lines but I decided to go ahead and use a uh, UV resin for this entire process here so just kind of layering those in putting them where I needed to put them and then when I come in later with some epoxy uh, drip later uh, I can coat these in thicker and thicker layers of glow in the dark drip and they'll hold they'll hold their shape uh, for a long time to come of course this is very much sped up so I've chopped this up into segments uh, we're gonna kind of just jump through this process So with that pretty much cure, I'm moving on to layer number eight. Now this is a glow-in-the-dark folk art two-part epoxy mix. Uh, and I also had it mix some uh, white glow-in-the-dark in the top left-hand corner. Uh, as I said before, the acrylics, I, I let it sit up too long and I actually lost that those 30 ounces. Shame on me. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's just it's just a posse, right? So I went ahead and layered on what I had during this session, uh, and I'm being very generous with this. It's very stringy. You can t really see how stringy it is. I'm not being afraid just to be messy with it. Have fun. That's the whole point of this type of project is just uh, stringing out there, let it ooze where it oozes. Uh, you don't have to be very controlled with it unless you want to, right? So overall the desired effect is really getting there. You can see the glow effect is really starting to increase uh, with every layer. Here's a kind of glamour effect of what it could and possibly will look like. Layer number nine. Now this time I incorporated a lot more yellow into my glow mixture. So this is uh, the glow in the dark yellow from folk art paint with two part epoxy. And I let this set up, but not too much. I'm, it's very, very runny still. And I added 
quite a bit of paint to this so it is extremely sticky uh, and it would set up quite fast if left alone just because I added so much acrylic to this you can see how stringy it is it's really oozing now my whole goal with this is just to add a different color code to the overall build this is just supposed to be that kind of top coat of ooze that's coming off the ends of his his tentacles um, or just like the top coat over over his mouth kind of like a drooly effect uh, and then what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a waterfall effect down the front of the shelf. I was having problems doing this and I couldn't get my uh, UV resin into the into that little groove between those drips to create the overall effect I want. I wanted to use the UV resin because it kind of hardens a lot harder uh, and then I can build up the glow on top of the UV resin. So the UV resin would be what's actually going over the contact of the shelf. What I used instead is I actually used a straw and I pumped the UV resin down the straw and then it gravity fed into that groove and then I was able to cure it and then add the glow to part epoxy to that cured UV resin. So a little bit of a process and I had to put out a lot of parchment paper here. The actual uh, ghost right now is sitting on a large book on top of a piece of parchment paper. So it's a very messy process, but the, the straw trick with the gravity feed of the UV resin really worked in a pinch. Um, of course, it lost I lost the straw in the process. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> but it, it worked out quite well. Alright, so the next step in this process is I'm going to remake the eyes and the mouth for the stained glass effect. This time I decided to go not with blue, but just a simple amber color. I used yellow sunshine, uh, Tim Holtz ink, and uh, UV resin to give this effect. Uh, now I didn't add a whole lot of color to this. I kept the color pretty simple. And then I got to thinking, how likely am I to really remove this and add a different color later? Probably not. You know, I may tell myself I will, but I probably am not going to do that. So I went ahead and just glued it into place with a second layer of uh, UV resin over the colored portion. And this is kind of what the overall effect of the glow would look like. More lumens if I add an electrical power source later. Then I'm going to go ahead and cut out the a piece of carpet for the base so that it doesn't in any way adhere to the shelf itself or scratch it or anything like that. It just adds a nice soft base for it to sit on on the actual shelf itself. So I am going to keep the drips and the little base drips where they flatten out uh, where they make contact with the carpet so all of that gets a dab of uh, E6000 glue and glued into place and then I cut the carpet out around it and then make sure it's nice and smooth and flat and then that is all there is to that so also what I plan to do is I want a name for this beautiful bad boy. Now I posted it to my TikTok followers. Uh, it was a TikTok exclusive naming event and I had quite a few people suggest names. Uh, we ended up uh, posting a TikTok uh, asking for suggestions and we got a few people to respond. So it's just a fun process to engage a bunch of people and here is that. What's up and welcome back into Barley Studios everybody. I need your help. I'm about to finish up this awesome full length video for YouTube where I'm taking this $1 candle holder ghost and turning him into an awesome glow in the dark ectoplasmic drip monster ghost. And when I say monster, oh, does he have secrets to hide? But I need help guys. I need a name for this awesome little guy. Leave your recommendation in the comments, share to your friends. And in a few days, me and my daughter will pick out our favorite name. The winner will get a tag in the next TikTok and full-length YouTube video. And man alive, did we have some awesome comments. We had everything from Oscar, Frank, uh, Goober, Boogalicious. We had Slimer, which is of course an easy one. Jess. <laughs> we had uh, uh, Boogie Boo. We had all sorts of great names, guys. Osmodius. Thanks to Dave's oil painting. But me and my daughter did decide on one in particular, and it was Monsters and Monstrous Suggestion of Scary Larry. And that is the one that won Scary Larry the Ghost. Absolute awesome name, you guys. And I can't stop saying it. I introduce you to Mr. Scary Larry the Ghost. 
awesome. Thank you, uh, Monsters and Monsters, for that suggestion. Uh, I, like I said, I promised to tag her in this video, so thank you so much for that suggestion of a wonderful name. So as we enjoy these last uh, few minutes of awesome glamour shots of this fun little build, I may come back later on down the road and sculpt him a little sign that says Scary Larry the Ghost <laughs> out of some uh, Sculpey clay. But for now, what an amazing build this thing turned out to be. It was so fun to use so many varieties of different drips. Uh, and the glow effect is just so next level. Thank you all for watching this amazing content. I had such a good time putting it together for you guys. Happy Halloween, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Please like and subscribe, and later, guys. Or should I say, boo?